it is Ashley Fields with Yard Art R Us. And I am back so we can do Wise Man number three. So, so far you've already got the first and the second Wise Man, Wise Men, excuse me. Um, so this will be your last one. Doo -doo. All right, let me get this shared everywhere. I need to get it shared. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Boom, boom. All right, got her going. As you guys hop in, say hello. Hello, Debbie. Hello, my dear. Hi, Kathy. Miss Kathy, I, get, I got all the wise men and shepherds cut. So they will be in store tomorrow. Hi, Paula. How are you? So glad y'all can come and hang out with me again. All right, y'all. We are going to, actually, we're going to start with Windex because this has been sitting around for just a little bit. Y'all got to tell me what's everybody up to today. I know Debbie said she's hanging out with her grandson. What's everybody else up to? We are, uh, I had just, I was just talking to my husband and my daughter right before I went live. I was like, y'all want to do uh, Sloppy Joe's for dinner? We haven't done that in a while. And then my husband's like, let's go to Roadhouse. <laughs> so after I get done with my life, I'm going to go get cleaned up. And we're going to go to an early dinner. So I'm looking forward to that. Hi, Paula. I'm so glad you're here, my dear. I am going to just start hopping into it. And um, we can just chit chat as we go. Paula says she's working from home and planning to take the kids to the beach tomorrow. How fun. Y'all, my daughter keeps asking um, when we can go to the beach. But we live in Conroe, so the beach is like a two-hour drive from us. And it's like the drive down there is not bad. It's the drive coming back home when you're already tired, you know? <laughs> Debbie says, I like his way of thinking. Yeah, I had texted him. I was like, I was thinking going to H-E-B, get some groceries, I'll cook. He's like, I'm thinking uh, Roadhouse sounds really good. I was like, well, okay, I'm not going to complain. And then I don't have to cook or clean. And that's always a plus. So, you know, hi, Karen, how are you? Y'all, I, can I just tell you, totally off subject, but I, um, we have had a leak going on around the faucet in my bathtub. And I have almost like a claw foot tub. It's not claw foot, but it is a standalone um, tub. And so we finally have gotten the tile and we are tiling all around the tub because currently it just sits around with sheetrock everywhere or, you know, regular walls. And so I haven't had my tub in two nights and I, I believe we're gonna have, I'm gonna get my tub back tonight. So I am so excited to just soak in an Epsom bath this evening. You know, you take for granted little things like your bathtub. Now, granted, I do have three other bathtubs in my house, but or two other bathtubs. There's three total. Uh, but, you know, none of them are just like my bathtub. So that is my thing that I am really looking forward to tonight. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Jane. How are you guys doing? All right, y'all. That was some shading yellow on my yellow. This is my Royal number 12 brush. Ooh. Can I tell y'all, we have been working on um, fall blanks. We are gonna have our fall sneak peek, not this Monday, but the following Monday. I wanna say it might be like August 2nd, I think. Not 100% sure, I'd have to look at the calendar, but I think it's August 2nd. And so in August, we're gonna do that release of all of our fall stuff. So basically July, we give you guys all the Christmas, and then in August, we give you guys all the fall. And we do all of our tutorials early so that when our busy season gets here, we already have a lot of those tutorials already filmed. And so I can't wait to show you guys some of the new fall stuff. I think you're going to absolutely love it. I cannot wait to show you all the train we're gonna do. We have a Halloween train. It is so precious. And um, I am just really looking forward to painting more new things with you guys because it's something I really enjoy. So y'all, this is that mixture. It is nutmeg and gold mixed together. So I have gold right here on the base. What I did is I took that same gold and mixed a couple of drops of nutmeg into it. Uh, nutmeg is a color that we carry in our, um, our paint collection. 
and it's just a really beautiful brown kind of like a darker deeper brown and so that is what I'm using right here to get that shading and y'all my lighting stinks it's not the greatest but you guys can see it's such a great compliment Paula says yay a train girl it's so cute and this train is actually it is a um, bless your art template but it was only a two-part train and so I created a third train car to go with it and it's darling I know I posted it on my personal page I know at once upon a time I showed it on a video I think I actually painted it back in April or May and I showed it on one of the videos who knows which one there's been so many videos since then uh, but I'm looking forward to showing it to you guys and getting to paint it with y'all. It's going to be fun. I'm, I'm just ready. I think I'm ready for a new season. I love Christmas. I've been enjoying it, but I'm ready for like a change. Kathy says, looks like peanut butter. It kind of does, doesn't it? How are you doing, Miss Kathy? All right, guys, we're just going to keep moving. Keep on moving. I'm going to switch over to that shading flush. So uh, this is what I use on my skin tone. That base is my flush, and then I come in with that shading flush. And in fact, yeah, I'm gonna use my number 10. I thought I would use that 12, but that 12 is a little wide. Anytime I'm doing these faces, especially on these guys, your hands, your faces, it's very small surface area, only a couple of fingers wide for me. And so you need almost a smaller brush. I can. I'm using a 10, an eight might even be better. If you're somebody that's got a heavy hand, you might need to, to use a, a smaller number on your shader. I'm just kinda, basically I just load just a little bit on that tip. That lighting is terrible in here. And then I simply kinda set it down in those grooves and just pull it around. Not too much not too little this is one of those things I definitely keep a little bit more on the subtle side Come right here. just like that all right and then up here on the base Kathy says any suggestions on how to enlarge your templates to yard art size Kathy, great question, and in fact, my mother and I were discussing this earlier. Our templates, we, we use CNC's, uh, both Mary and myself. And so we work with digital templates, essentially. We work with like DXFs and SVGs, things like that. And so when it comes to sizing them, we size them in our computer with our software. And so I don't know, in fact, I think I need to kind of talk to some other friends in the crafting world about how they sell their templates and what they do with them. Because for us, we just use them on our CNC. And so the sizing part, I'm not sure. I've heard block poster, but I think I might need to do a little bit of research on block posters so that I can be of a better help for you. So I say all of that to really say, I don't have the answer, but we're talking about it and we're trying to figure out how to better um, kind of assist you ladies and gentlemen in that arena. It's just not something that we personally have um, any experience with. So if anybody has any ideas, if anybody watching this um, has, you know, tips and tricks on sizing uh, templates, I would love to hear it but for us we literally put it in our software and I'll highlight it and I'll say I want to make this 42 inches and boom it's 42 inches and I take it over to the CNC and the CNC cuts it so that's kind of how I do it and now uh, also Kathy another thing that you could do is uh, take your images to somewhere like Kinko's Office Max Office Depot and get them to print it in a large poster size for you uh, I don't know what that might cost though all right, y'all, I'm using just that shading flush that I already had in the brush. I didn't add any more. I'm basically just kind of swirling it on my lid and getting it brought up into those bristles. I don't have a whole lot in here, okay? So I'm just taking it from there and very lightly, just kind of doing a little swirl and giving him a rosy cheek. 
I don't want that to be too dark. I don't want it to be really thick. Uh oh, I'm over here getting gold paint over here. <coughs> now I'm just gonna kind of take this brush and just do some little swish marks. I don't want to do too much when you're messing with the like the flesh. It's you don't have a whole lot of space, so less is gonna be more. Hi Regina, how are you? Hey Lisa. Lisa says I use Block Poster and Publisher. Lisa, I might have to message you and, and see how you do it exactly. Because we heard, I did see, I don't know who it was, but somebody did message us that they took um, a template and put it in Block Poster and it was printing really small and asked us if we knew what, what to do. And I'm like, ah, I need to research because I don't know. I just don't have experience. So I don't want to tell you guys, yeah, do this or do that when I really just don't know. I'll, I'll do some research though and I'm happy to get back to you guys with what I find. Hi Nance, how are you? Hey Brian. Okay, keep on moving y'all, keep on. Oh, I just put that number 10 up and I want to get it back because this brown, uh, this reindeer brown on the beard is very, very small. It's not very wide. Um, so I don't want to get a brush that's too wide and that'll overtake all of that. Alrighty, I'm gonna, so right here, this brown, this is called reindeer brown, and I am pairing that with some shading brown. I'm still gonna use the number 10. Definitely did not get enough paint on here. There we go. Still using that number 10. So that I can keep my swipes on the thinner side. Just don't wanna get too thick. There we go. Now I'm gonna come around here. I'm almost turning my brush sideways because this is such a thin area. I even pulled a little bit of that shading flesh in here, but that's okay. Now from here, I'm just gonna kinda add a few little swish marks like there. There we go. Y'all, this is so far away. Let me show you guys up close a little bit. Camera angles are really hard to get a decent angle when the, your piece is so tall. I want to say this guy is 44 inches tall. Um, so yeah, it's a little harder to show you guys. All right, now we have, we've got purple, blue, red. It really doesn't matter. They're all going to be darker shade tones. I think I'll go ahead and do purple just to keep me from if I do that red right now and I'm reaching over doing other colors, I'm liable to smear the red, which I don't want to do. So this purple was a mixture of light purple and shading purple, both colors in our color palettes. I just did a mixture to kind of get me a tone in between and I'm gonna shade it with shading purple. Uh, Lisa says, block poster is pretty easy. I haven't found one uh, yard art yet, but I do my door hangers that way. In publisher, you can create your own page size and that it will print on multiple sheets. I think Publisher is only available in the Office version of Microsoft Office. Great information, Lisa. I really appreciate you sharing that with us. We're gonna be looking into that and see if we can't film um, a tutorial with some helpful tips um, if we can <laughs> kind of figure it out ourselves. <laughs> Sometimes that's easier said than done, y'all. My mom, uh, Mary, she has gotten pretty proficient um, working in the computer and doing AI um, and all that kind of stuff. And so it's crazy whenever I used to have to teach my mom how to, you know, use the computer and all that. And then now she far surpasses my knowledge when it comes to technology. And I'm kind of like, wait, what happened here? <laughs> So, y'all, I don't know. I quit um, working in the professional world six years ago to just craft and paint full time. And since then, I just feel like my knowledge over um, anything technology is just not what it used to be. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. But um, yeah, I kind of feel almost like I am just uneducated at, <laughs> at times when I'm trying to figure stuff out on the computer.
I love, love, love this mixture of purple. Again, lightened, light purple shading purple. But then when you pair it with this shading purple, it's just so pretty. I tried to stick with some of those darker, deeper, more traditional colors when it came to um, the wise men. And so that's why I ended up doing a lot of mixing. Typically I'm not somebody that really mixes a whole lot. Um, but as you can see, I definitely prefer this shade of purple that's on my base as opposed to that light purple that we usually use. Or if I were to use this really dark purple, it would just be harder to shade. Now from here, let me turn this phone downward a little bit. There we go. Now when I'm coming in, I'm kind of doing some swish marks. There's no real right or wrong. I will kind of just boop, bring this out almost. Kind of just almost, you're almost like envisioning that fabric. Uh, coming upwards, right? This has very little paint on the brush. Just a little bit. And I just try to make sure that I'm not starting and stopping in that same spot every time. I kind of want different heights, different widths mixed in. You want it to look like fabric flowing. All right, so we got that purple done back down just a little bit. I'm going to wash out this brush. The only other things we need to go ahead and shade is going to be this red and our brilliant blue. So let me cap this one. Let's go ahead and do our blue right quick. We're going to save that red for last just because it's closest to me, which means likelihood of me smearing it everywhere is pretty high. Hey, Teresa, how are you? All right, y'all, this brilliant blue, I'm pairing that with navy blue. And then I am still using, is this one the 10? No, I'm, I'm using the number 12 uh, Royal Soft Grip Shader. Well, I call it shader, but it's flat tip brush. And just do a couple, boop, a couple strokes. And we're gonna follow this around. I love this navy with this brilliant. It's such a pretty color on here. Come up here to the very top. And again, we'll just do some light swish marks. And just come up there. All right. This little part of blue right here is kind of small. I'm going to just leave that be. I'm gonna cap that navy, clean the brush, and then we'll switch over to some shading red. And before you know it, we will be on to outlining. You go get them, Tootsie. It's my corgi. I've got three dogs, but I, my corgi is the most vocal. And she lets everybody know if anything's going on. So that's the one y'all usually hear in that background most of the time. All right, now we're switching to shading red and pairing that with red. Again, I'm, when I'm shading y'all, I kind of just lay that brush down where that paint is. And I really just set it down in those lines and follow the perimeter. Once I do that, that's kind of when I come in and add some swish marks, shading marks, uh, to kind of add some depth and dimension. no real right or wrong. I just try to not go too overboard when I'm using my shader with my shading color because we're still going to come in with black and we're still going to come in with white and we just don't want to overpower this piece with too much. All right, so we are going to cap this and let me hit this with the blow dryer right quick and get it dry enough that we can get some outline paint on here.
I'm just not smearing paint everywhere. I just don't want my colors getting mixed. Okay, Some of these parts that y'all are seeing me touch, they just have really thick paint, so I'm just kind of wiping it in a little bit, trying to get it to uh, just dry. brushes. They're both the uh, same brand. It's Both of them are uh, uh, Royal Soft Grit brushes and I used a number 10 and a number 12. Now I think it's after this I'll be using just one brush the rest of the video and that is a uh, Royal Gold Script Liner number 4. Creature of habit, y'all. So you'll see me reuse the same brushes in almost every video. Not only that, I, once you get used to certain brushes and the way that they lay down and the way how thick that they get, how much paint that they can carry, it's um, that's just something that like creates a habit for me. And I am somebody who loves routines. I don't like change. <laughs> And so when I find something I like, I really stick with it. All right, we're gonna start over here with our gold. Um, so your base on here was gold, right? Then I used a gold and nutmeg mixture, which is just that base, a color of gold mixed with a couple of drops of nutmeg. And now I'm going to outline with my nutmeg. These are just kind of keeping it in the same color family. Um, I, I tend to do that with anything that's, oh, I'm dripping over here, that uh, has brown tones or flesh tones. Because if I were to honestly outline this in black, it would look really just dark, stark kind of lines. And I think that the this brown tone helps it to pop. without being overpowering. You guys, whenever y'all are using um, script liners or shaders, anytime you guys see me using these two ounce cups, it's because I have water added to them. The reason I add water when I'm shading and I'm outlining is so I get more fluid brush strokes. My uh, my brush can go a little bit further for me. All right, so I got that nutmeg right here on the gold. I'm gonna rinse that script liner. And we are going to go and do black, and then we'll come in with our shading red on the beard. So now I'm gonna switch to black. Y'all, this black is almost, it's like watery. Um, I like it like this. Granted, whoa, my brush is old. It's very worn in. So, to me, the older the brush, the more water I find I like to add so that I get really good fluid long strokes every time I put that paintbrush down. So, if you're new to painting and you're new to outlining, script lining, anything like that, uh, my advice is just use your paint as is. If you're struggling with it, if your paintbrush can only go about that far, and you can't get sh like longer strokes out of it, start by adding a couple of drops of water. Start with a little bit and you can always add more. The reason I add so much water, y'all, is just that's my comfort comfortability level. I've been doing this so long that I can honestly sit in my chair 
grab my squirt bottle and squirt water in here and I'll know before I even mix it whether I have too much or too little water. And that just comes from a lot of experience. But at the end of the day, when you're painting, you do what works best for you. Sometimes the things that I do might not be best for everybody, but I do it because it works good for me. See, this, this is watered down, and you can see how far I can get that paintbrush to go in one stroke. That's why I add water. I like the long strokes because it looks more fluid. Like you don't see that start and stop on every line. basically just following right now I'm just following all the etched lines so all of our blades come pre-etched with the design already on them and so when I start outlining I'm, I'm really just following all those CNC lines after I do that that's when I'll kind of come in and then all those swishes I call them swish marks that I made with my shading brush or my flat tip brush, I'll kind of come over top and kind of accent those a little bit as well. Got a little white poking through right there. Let's move down here to the bottom. Let's get the bottom down here done. Y'all, next week I've got two shepherds uh, to do on a live. We got the drummer boy and we have the ho ho ho. And then those will be it for my tutorials. I'm not 100% sure if Mary has any left or not. Uh, but we will be wrapping up our Christmas in July here pretty soon. Start moving on to fall. Hi Marie, how are you doing, hon? Hi Martha. All right, just gonna keep on trucking. Y'all notice when I'm kind of coming in with these, uh, I guess low lights you might call them. I'm not adding more paint to that brush. I'm letting them be light and wispy. I'm not trying to come in real heavy. So I almost load the brush, offload the brush. Keep it simple. Come up here. Let's see, throw the top of the hat. And this is another one earlier. I know the last Wiseman number two that we did uh, this morning, I had told you guys that the, ha the crown that he had on would have been really cute with um, gold as opposed to yellow. I even think that you could even use metallics on here too and still look good. Okay. I'm trying to just see. Okay, I'm done with black. Oh, I'm talking too soon, y'all. Got to do these guys. All right, now I'm done with black. Nope, nope, nope. See, keep talking too soon. Okay, <laughs> I think I'm done with black. 
Um, Marie says, love watching you paint. You make it look so easy. Well, thank you, my dear. Hi, Carolyn. How are you? Uh, Marie, I've been doing this full time for six years. And prior to that, let's see, I'm 30, 34 now. Um, I would say I've been painting at least at minimum as a hobby for 15 years. And so it's one of those things that it just comes with time and a lot of practice. But I can honestly say that my stuff before I started doing it full time, yeah, it didn't look very great. I was just trying my best though. <laughs> All right, y'all, that flesh. We already used this shading flesh with a shading brush. Now I'm gonna use this shading flesh on my script liner. Same thing, the reason I'm not outlining the shading flesh, um, sometimes I might outline that with a, um, a shading red, but in this case, look how little your hands are. These are about three fingers wide. So I'm simply bringing this in just to cover up the little imperfections because that's the nice part about outlining you get to cover up any little imperfections so when it comes to certain things that you're like okay I'm not gonna outline that you might just need to clean up the lines just a bit so like right here I'm just gonna clean that up and just clean up these tips of these fingers where they meet the gold and I'm just leaving it like that it doesn't make a big difference aside from just cleaning it up, kind of buttoning up that area, if you will. Just a little bit. Now I'm going to switch. We just have a little bit of shading red and that's gonna go on the beard. Let me see, I'm gonna see if I can't move this down. I'm gonna get y'all a little closer, hold on. Might look a little cray cray right now. Give me a second. Hi Lauren, how are you my dear? All right, now up here on the beard, we've got that reindeer brown as that base of the beard and then we shaded with a little bit of shading brown. And now I'm gonna outline with just a bit of shading red. Okay, let's see, hopefully this is a decent enough camera angle. Uh, hi Candace. Candace says, how do I become a member? I just went on the website and signed up but I can't seem to find out about the membership. Candace Yard Art Academy, which is our membership group, um, that opens in September. So we open that four times a year. We just re-enrolled people blah, 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 maybe just like a couple weeks ago, last month, I don't know. It's been recently. And so the doors are just closed, I believe, until September. Uh, so if you have signed up for that waiting list, Candace, then we will get, we will email you uh, when those doors are opening to let you know. And that way, if you're still interested at that point, then you can sign up then. All right, y'all, just following the lines. I'm creating that boundary. I'm just simply using this um, shading red and putting that boundary between my flush tones and my brown tones. That's all I'm doing right now. Okay, Tootsie. Sorry, y'all. She is loud and in charge. Yeah, baby? We'll talk about it on camera later. And then I'm just simply going to come over here on top. Just boop, boop, boop. Ta da! Leave it like that. I'm not going to outline that face again because it's such a small area. You know, it's about, I don't know, four fingers wide. So if I started to bring in darker colors around here, it would just become a really dark blob and it wouldn't look very good. Okay, so outlining is done. Can y'all see those hands too that just got a little, they just got cleaned up. I just cleaned up around those lines. That's all I really did with that script liner. So now let's get some, I'm gonna clean out that script liner and still sticking with the same brush. And we will move over and grab some highlighting, some white, because everybody, y'all know, nothing is ever done. And I mean no paint project is ever done until you have highlights. That's what really starts to bring it together. So whenever I'm highlighting, I just kinda, I really load that paint this is a really watered down uh, white. 
almost like a cream consistency. So I load it and I offload it. I scrape off that excess. I'm wanting, remember, I'm wanting these lines to be thin. I don't want thick lines. So kind of just start putting it down. I'm looking for, see how those are wispy? That's what I want. I want wispy. I don't want it to be too dark. Just very light. Come in right here. Maybe just a little touch right there. A little right there. Okay, we're gonna keep moving. I'm gonna come over here. Add just a touch. Maybe even a little curve right there. All right now on my hands, y'all, these are really, really small, so I'm keeping it light. Not trying to do too much in here. You can really get overpowering. Follow, come up the middle of those fingers, just a tad. And if you notice when I'm highlighting, I'm almost going in between or beside all of my um, kind of low lights. Just adding a little bit. When it comes to trying to do fabric, I just kind of almost take that brush I'm really just taking my arm and kind of pulling it side to side just a little bit. I want that fabric to look like it's kind of flowing. And come in here. Just like so, like so. And same thing. Let me raise you guys back up. Let's see if y'all can see it a little bit better. There we go. Finish her out down here. Don't those highlights make such a big difference? I just don't feel like you could ever have a paint project without highlights. Bum -ba -dum. Okay, let's see. I think, I think, I think. I think I'm done. Let me raise you up a little more and let you guys see the whole thing. Here is Weissman number three. All right, let's go over some colors. I started with, uh, I rolled one coat of white on underneath. The reason I always do that is I just feel like it makes my colors more vibrant. So uh, I had a coat of white underneath as my prime coat. I came on with uh, red number 20. This purple is a mixture between light purple and shading purple. I mixed the two together. Let me see. Of course, I don't have the mixture here right in front of me, but here's the two purples in our palette. I just mixed these two together to create one in the middle. All right. Um, this blue right here is our brilliant blue. This yellow is light yellow. Um, we have flesh on our hands and our um, face. And then the beard was done in reindeer brown. This gold over here, that is deco art gold. Um, Debbie, the eye on here, he's got his eye closed. So it's just that simple flesh tone on there. Uh, deco art gold, I got that at Hobby Lobby. And so it's an interior exterior. So it's just one of those metallics I like to use sometimes. From there, we shaded this gold. We shaded with a mixture of gold and nutmeg. Um, on our red, we shaded with shading red. Purple, we shaded with shading purple. Brilliant blue, we shaded with navy blue. Light yellow, we shaded with shading yellow. And flesh, we shaded with shading flesh. And I think uh, reindeer brown, we shaded with shading brown. And then from there, we basically outlined everything in black with the exception of the beard, which we used um, shading red. And our flesh, we just simply used shading flesh on a script liner to kind of touch that up. Add a little white highlights and bada bing, bada boom. Uh, Debbie, thank you for asking. I do appreciate that. You helping keeping me on my toes, my dear. All right, y'all, I've got all more of these cut out. They will be delivered to the store tomorrow. So if you were waiting on Wiseman or Shepherds, they're all put back in the system. So if you look on the website, they're all back in stock, but they will be actually delivered to the store tomorrow. So that's all I have for you guys today. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. I will see you guys back here 
uh, probably on Monday with our shepherds, our drummer boy, and our ho-ho-ho. I don't know which one we'll do first, but those will all be next week. So y'all enjoy your weekend, everybody. I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.